My name is Dr. Linda Pulgreen, and I've been treating and managing patients with mucopolysaccharidosis type 1 or MPS1 for about 10 years. MPS1 is a rare autosomal recessive disease that belongs to a larger group of metabolic disorders known as lysosomal storage disorders. The attenuated form of MPS1 often goes misdiagnosed for several years, which can significantly delay the initiation of disease management. Most of you may be familiar with Hurler syndrome, the severe phenotype. However, those with attenuated MPS1 are the most challenging patients to recognize and diagnose because they don't typically present with the overt physical symptoms seen in the younger patients with Hurler syndrome. Take Kaylee, for example, with attenuated MPS1. She exhibited signs of MPS1 from early childhood in the form of corneal clouding and vision deterioration, but did not receive a diagnosis of MPS1 until she was 11 years old. So let's take a closer look at Kaylee's eyes to examine what's happening inside the cells. Lysosomal storage disorders are characterized by enzyme deficiencies and accumulation of toxic materials in most types of cells in the body. People with MPS1 have a deficiency in the enzyme alpha-L-Igeronidase, or IDUA, which leads to accumulation of glycosaminoglycans, or GAGs, inside the lysosomes. Over time, this accumulation can cause progressive organ damage and failure, severe morbidities, and reduced life expectancy, usually due to respiratory infections, restricted airway disease, or cardiac complications. The clinical manifestations of MPS1 are highly heterogeneous and range from the more recognizable severe form to the less obvious attenuated forms. Patients with Hurler phenotype make up the largest proportion of patients with a diagnosis of MPS1. In contrast, patients with attenuated MPS1 have more variable phenotypes and symptoms that may not be readily recognizable. Many do not exhibit any distinct physical features as with the Hurler phenotype. So, it's important to look beyond physical attributes for a constellation of signs and symptoms of MPS1 that may not be so obvious. Clinical presentation and organ involvement can vary with phenotype and span multiple organ systems. The most prominent symptoms are in bold text. Although every patient won't exhibit each of these, early recognition of these symptoms as MPS1 may lead to earlier disease-specific interventions. Patients with attenuated MPS1 often visit multiple physicians before receiving a diagnosis. This delay in diagnosis results in delayed management of this progressive and debilitating disease. Kaylee's attenuated MPS1, for example, went undiagnosed for 11 years. At age 11, her main complaint was recurrent rhinorrhea that was non-responsive to antihistamines and nasal sprays. Allergy tests were negative and she had no obvious triggers. Medical history reveals that Kaylee has had corneal clouding since early childhood with deteriorating vision requiring glasses by five years old. Kaylee also has finger contractures and restricted mobility. Although Kaylee has joint stiffness, she has no redness or swelling of the joints as in GIA. You may ask, what clinical signs would trigger a suspicion of MPS1? And some of the signs and symptoms are quite nonspecific. However, when a child or young adult has corneal clouding, cardiac valve insufficiencies, carpal tunnel syndrome, joint pain without redness or swelling, or contractures of multiple joints, MPS1 should be in your differential diagnosis. The diagnosis may be based on a unique combination of symptoms rather than a single presenting symptom. And although these clinical signs and symptoms alone are not enough to make a diagnosis, they warrant more definitive testing. Kaylee's corneal clouding, joint pain and stiffness and finger contractures ultimately led her doctor to suspect MPS1. And diagnostic tests confirm the suspicion that Kaylee has an attenuated MPS1 phenotype. If MPS1 is suspected, a simple preliminary test can screen for elevated levels of gags in the urine. A definitive diagnosis of MPS1 relies on demonstrating a deficiency in IDUA enzyme activity. Genetic testing can further confirm the diagnosis. The disease manifestations of MPS1 are debilitating and progressive and can shorten life expectancy. Early recognition of signs and symptoms can help shorten the diagnostic journey and avoid unnecessary tests, treatments, and referrals. Recognition of these signs and symptoms is particularly challenging in patients with attenuated phenotypes. They can present with symptoms that are less obvious and may appear to mimic a more common diagnosis. A deeper dive into the constellation of symptoms beneath the surface 
may reveal a diagnosis of MPS-1 that was not initially apparent. Prompt diagnosis of MPS-1 can provide people like Kaylee with access to appropriate disease management sooner that can hopefully prevent many of the serious complications of this disease. Receiving the diagnosis of MPS-1 helps me to finally make sense of the symptoms I was experiencing. People find it hard to believe sometimes that I live with a serious genetic condition because I don't look or act any differently from them. But I make sure my friends and family understand what I'm going through so they can help me when I need it. If you want to learn more about MPS-1, check out some of these websites.